Today we're going to talk about how a value finder can help you choose what color to use. And we're going to do it by painting a dog. Let's get started. So what I've done here is put side by side the value dabs that I make to create this painting and then put the value finder in front of it. And you can stop the video and take a good look. See how all the val the what I mean by value is lights and darks. So when you look at the color, you can be deceived by how light or dark something is. And especially look through this value finder and you can see the darkest dark. It stands out. And that is the last thing that I do in the painting is put in the darkest darks. But we'll talk about that as we go along. This is just a red piece of plexiglass, but it can help enormously. And now we're going to paint a dog and we'll create these value dabs. So if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I work from my darkest darks to my lightest lights. That's not always the case, especially if I'm going to paint an object that's white, but most of the time that's what I do. So the very first thing I do here is I'm putting in the dark shapes. That's all I care about is shapes. And if I create the shapes accurately and in the correct value, meaning the correct lightness or darkness, I will end up with a painting that resembles the photograph. I am not trying to create the same photograph, so, uh, which is a, a slippery slope to go on. <laughs> um, and I do have videos about that. Uh, I think it's, it's entitled um, How I Painted uh, Really, Really, Really Good Bad Paintings. Because if you match things to the photograph, it's, it's just never going to have the kind of pop that you want it to have. So here I am putting in my darkest darks, and that is something that I mix. It's not coming out of a tube. And this mixes alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of burnt sienna. And basically, almost all my mixes are going to be based on that. That's kind of the triad, or the three that I'm going to mix things from. Now the value dabs begin. So I put in my darkest darks, and now I'm mixing and adding some Naples yellow to my color that I already put in because I want to go one step higher in terms of value. I want to make this lighter just in comparison to what I already put in. Now one of the challenges of this particular painting is that this is a painting for a friend whose, whose dear dog died. This is Tilly. She lived to be like 15 years old or something. And I wanted to make sure that it that the coloring was pretty accurate because I'm painting it for someone else. If I had been painting it for me, I probably would have gotten involved in some color value swap outs, which just means that I would have inserted more color for the, uh, for the neutral colors. Now, I've got my darkest darks in, and now I'm going to use Naples Yellow as my placeholder. So I'm looking now at the lights. Now I'm looking at any of the light shapes. So, in to recap, what I'm trying to do is put in my darkest darks first, and then I put in my lights. I don't use any white out or uh, masking fluid because I find when you take it off, it just never, for me, never integrates very well. I'm using as few strokes as possible and looking at shape. So that's what's happening here. And now I'm having fun with the, her stuffed toy. Her stuffed toy is a skunk, which it turned out that that was her favorite stuffed toy. So I'm glad I chose this photograph because it, it has a lot of meaning for Patty, the, the owner. And the owner of Tilly, the, the dog, is someone that you hear on this channel all the time, which if you subscribe, you will enjoy hearing her songs because she's a really wonderful musician. All right, so now I'm mix, doing a lot of mixing and comparing with that value finder because now I cannot put anything in that's as dark as the darks that I've already put in, and I can't put anything in that's as light as the lights that I put in. Otherwise, my strategy will be all off. So now I'm just mixing any kind of neutrals that I can and comparing them because, like I said, I'm looking for something that will stay in between my darks that I established and my lightest lights. So that's how the value finder is going to keep me on track. Because if you squint your eyes really, really hard, I mean really squint your eyes, even so your nose scrunches up, you'll be able to see where the, the same thing that you see when you use the value finder. Those darks start to separate from the lights. But it takes some practice to do that. 
The other thing that I'm doing is, um, even though the dog looks like it is a completely gray dog, it, it isn't. There's some warm grays in there and there's some cooler grays in there. And by warmer grays, it just means that I'm going to add some yellow into the mixes. And if they're cooler grays, then I'm going to add some blue into the mixes. And I want a pretty good assortment of, of those. Otherwise, it's it'll be too monochromatic a painting. Neutrals are great, but monochrome is going to look uh, pretty dead. So I don't want to do that. Ooh, that's a bad thing to say, especially when we're doing a tribute painting for an animal that passed on. But there's a warm gray. Warm gray, you know, a warm gray really turns into kind of a tan or a brown. But uh, I am trying to stick with the strategy from the very beginning. You can see the darks that I put in are still well established and the lights are well established. Now, if you have a subject that is mostly neutrals, it's really nice to put some pops of color in because the color will have even more impact than it would if your painting had real color in it. And so that's why I chose the purple to put, put behind. And it's going to balance nicely because it's a complementary color to the kind of yellowish honey colored floor that's going to go in now. Complementary colors always create some amount of excitement to the eye. So that's what's happening here. And I'm going to leave the whites of the paper white. And what, what I mean by that is only the things that appear as being really, really white. <laughs> and there aren't, very, there aren't very many of them in life. You know, nature doesn't necessarily give you those absolutes of blacks and whites. It just doesn't. And it doesn't necessarily give you hard edges. It's full of shapes that are not in symmetry necessarily. And, you know, it likes the irregular. Nature likes the irregular. So, so there's just a suggestion of the floorboards there and a certain amount of directionality because the composition is almost all horizontal. So a little bit of a diagonal will add a certain degree of interest to the eye. Now I'm putting in my darkest dark. And you can see I've mixed that up. You can see how much darker that is. You can see that even without the value finder. There aren't many darks. I mean, true, true darks. But, and I couldn't put them in at the very beginning because I didn't know where they were. You can't know where they are until you've established something to have in your darks within context. So that's what I do at the very end. That's what I consider finishing touches. And then the other last thing to do is anytime you have an object, an object is going to be resting on something. Uh, and so there are never those just absolute beginnings and endings. You know, there's not... You know, if you look at a glass on a, on a table, for example, it looks like there's a line underneath. But if you really, really, really squint your eyes, you'll see that it's not a line and that there's actually a shape. And you just get more accustomed to seeing shape. And that's why I call myself a color shape painter. I think that's what I do. I don't think I paint things. I think I paint shapes. But I paint them in a systematic way, going from my darks to my lights, using as few strokes as possible, and... Uh, and, and somehow it starts to create form. And it's, it's just such an enjoyable thing to do. So that is Tilly. And here comes the final painting, which Patty was really happy to get. And I'm really glad that I could paint it for her. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint wet, mask for value, mix for color. And please join my YouTube channel. Or more importantly, thank you for watching. And I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.